In the last few years, budget full suspension bikes have improved to the extent that spending around £1,000 or $1,000 unlocks impressive performance. Previously, to get a bike that rode well on red graded trails, your main option was a hardtail with front suspension only, but with a superior parts list. Full suspension bikes just didn't offer the same level of componentry that made them worthy of your cash. It's not just on the spec sheet where budget bouncers couldn't stack up to their hardtail siblings. They often seem slower to move on from old fashioned angles and cockpit setups. To answer the question of whether you're still better off buying a hardtail or should be looking at a full suspension bike for the same thousand pound or dollar budget, we've pitted a Boardman MHT 8.9 hardtail directly against the MTR 8.6 full suspension bike. The Boardman MTR 8.6 full susser looks like it should kick the outdated attitude of hardtail dominance into touch and it comes with a bang up to date shape that's ready to go head to head on any terrain or trail type. So which is better? A better frame and better parts or having suspension at both ends? Keep watching to find out. And before I get into this video, I first need to say thank you to our sponsors Freewheel, who provided the riding kit. If you like any of the kit I'm wearing and want to learn more, then check out the links in the description below. Here's a rundown of the two bikes we're pitting against one another. Boardman's top tier hardtail looks fantastic in its retro colorway with gunwall tires and these will appeal to the aesthetically conscious out there. With a lightweight aluminum frame, the 8.9 is designed to walk the line between trail and cross country with a 120 mm travel RockShox forks and wide ranging 12 speed gearing. Components are generally a step up from those on its full sus sibling with the money saved by not having a rear shock and complicated machine parts being put back into better equipment which I'll touch on in a minute. The MTR 8.6 is a value full susser that brings the same geometry as top of the range machines to the budget price bracket. Budget focused kit such as Tektro brakes and an SR Suntour fork is mixed with instantly recognizable parts, including top tier Maxxis Minion tires and an air sprung RockShox shock. The alloy frame sports 140 millimeters of front travel and 145 millimeters of rear. Beyond the fact one frame has a shock bolted onto it, the first thing you'll notice is the MHT 8.9 has a very clean looking, smooth welded front triangle, which could almost pass for carbon fiber from a distance. The matching tube junctions not only look neater, but also reduce weld flex, one of the main ways an alloy frame can crack. In contrast, the full sus MTR is chunkier and looks tougher, or clunky depending on your point of view. It has a six series alloy frame packing thick beefy tubes joined by fish scale TIG welds. Boardman claims both frames have modern geometry. As the hardtail is designed to straddle cross country and trail riding, they've given it more relaxed steering rather than the razor sharp edgy attitude of a purebred cross country bike. The MTR 8.6 is significantly slacker with a considerably more raked out 66 degree head angle versus the hardtail's more upright 68 degrees. This results in a lighter, more reactive steering on the MHD 8.9, something that's also a consequence of a shorter wheelbase. With the full sus having slower steering, which tends to keep the front wheel pointing forwards, it can feel lazier at the handlebar. But as soon as speeds ramp up, its steering is less prone to getting bounced offline in the rough stuff or to tuck suddenly on steep downhill sections. There's also a lot more room to move around on the full sus. Looking at the reach figures of both frames, the size large MHT puts your hands 441 millimeters away from your feet, while on the equivalent MTR, that increases to 475 millimeters. This extra length makes the full sus more stable, while the shorter hardtail frame places more rider weight forward on the bike for better balance when climbing out of the saddle. At the back, the taller top tubed hardtail takes advantage of not having any rear travel with a lower bottom bracket height for extra stability and better cornering. The MTR frame delivers 145 millimeters of rear wheel travel via a horse link four bar linkage, 
This is favoured by top brands, including Specialized and Canyon, and the design uses a secondary pivot on the chainstays to keep the suspension active when you need it most, and grabbing the brakes on your way down the steepest tracks. The rear end's squared off tubing design uses the latest 148mm boost hub spacing. But you can spot where Borman has saved cash for the suspension budget. You get an old fashioned quick release skewer rather than the MHT's stiffer bolt through axle. The savings here have been well spent, however, on a long stroke RockShox shock. It's driven by a rocker link mounted to the top tube with just enough space underneath for a water bottle. One thing that does get in the way on both Borman's is the saddle. Neither bike comes with a dropper post, and in my opinion, this is an obvious first upgrade. Both bikes use an air sprung fork that's easy to tune to the rider's weight. The MHT 8.9's RockShock Reba RL has 20mm less travel than the 140mm travel of the cheaper SR Suntour XCR34 on the MTR 8.6. Despite that, you'll be hard pressed to notice any difference in performance caused by the Reba's lower travel figure, with its action being significantly smoother and more controlled, sucking up bumps and recomposing for the next hit. While the Suntour fork is sophisticated enough to have light alloy legs, rather than the skinny steel ones found on plenty of cheap full sussers, its QR axle is very fiddly, which isn't ideal if you have to regularly remove the front wheel. Both offer the same adjustment options, a rebound damping dial plus a progressive low speed compression damping lockout to firm up the fork so it doesn't bob when pedaling hard on tarmac or smoother fire roads. The MTR's rear shock is a custom tuned RockShox Deluxe, which is limited to rebound damping adjustment only. However, if you add more than a few clicks of rebound damping, it gets really bogged down, which can leave the rear shock unable to return back into position fast enough to handle consecutive impacts. When you need to slow down, the MHT's SRAM Level T brakes are more refined and powerful than the MTR's Tektros, although neither offer huge top-end stopping power. The hardtail's better spec also includes higher quality formula hubs and lighter, more sculpted Boardman rims. These are fitted with fast-rolling Vittoria Barzo tires made from the brand's priciest quad compound graphene rubber blend. While these roll considerably faster than the Maxxis Minions mounted on the full Sus's wider and heavier rims, once grip becomes a priority, the Maxxis tyres are leagues ahead, especially if things get wet. The MTR 8.6's Shimano Dior drivetrain only has 10 cogs compared to the 12-speed SRAM SX Eagle on the MHT 8.9. Only having 10 gears compared to a dozen sounds like a big deal, but the Dior setup is smoother and more positive feeling overall. There were no issues with excessive jumps between gears or trouble scaling climbs with the full Sus's 46 tooth biggest cog. In fact, this component choice looks like a lesson in good budgeting. The better quality 10 speed drivetrain trumps the shifting of the 12 speed SRAM SX Eagle setup on the MHT. The MHT 8.9 has an impressively smooth ride. This is definitely not a rattle your fillings, rock hard, cheap feeling alloy hardtail. Even across chopped up trail surfaces and repeated routes, the frame follows the line traced by the smooth Reba fork. Over bark strip routes and dusty rocks, there's wheel spinning when climbing and a much less sure footed feel overall compared to the MTR 8.6s 145mm of rear suspension and Maxxis tyres. This means the hardtail speed advantage on flatter trails isn't as clear cut as you might expect, with the full sus bike often getting you across little techie sections without dabbing. This is where the MHT 8.9 can bobble and hunt for traction. While a 68 degree head angle isn't crazy steep for a trail or XC hardtail, the MTR 8.6's mellower steering feels much calmer and more neutral through tricky sections. This is on top of the hardtail feeling a bit more hectic on rougher trails thanks to the lack of rear suspension travel. Riding at a local trail centre where the tracks are really eroded 
This was evident in how, even with a superior fork, the MHT 8.9 was less capable of staying smooth when threading through technical lines. We're not talking about bombing downhill either, just maintaining some fluidity and rhythm through lumpy rocky sections where you'd expect the lighter bike to find pace more easily. What we'd call proper mountain biking, which is anything that a gravel bike can't handle, the MTR 8.6 is in its element and is calmness personified. It rides much more like an expensive trail bike and smooths out hefty bumps, giving you the confidence to get off the brakes and find some flow. The full sus allows power delivery when you want to inject some pace or winch back to the top of the trail without too much drama. Although its suspension is less refined than the top tier machines, it can actually feel too smooth at times. Hard charging riders may find the frame flexible and eager to smash through the first part of its travel. For new or intermediate riders, the rear shock being soft off the top gives good grip and comfort over hard sections. Matched with front suspension and the geometry, the MTR makes it easy to have fun and find your limits. Ultimately, this is why we choose the full sus from this pair every time. Messing about in corners, rattling over bumps, and flashing through berms is what mountain biking is all about. The MTR 8.6's rear suspension and slacker geometry allow you to get stuck in and play on proper tracks with more confidence and security than the sharper feeling, more jangly ride of the MHT 8.9. Yes, the full sus is £100 more than its better dressed sibling and isn't perfect, but then no bike for this cash is ever going to be. Looking around at Borman's budget full sus competition, it's genuinely hard to find a contender that comes close to offering such trail taming geometry for this much money, especially now that Calibre's award-winning bus nut appears to no longer be available. Please let me know what you think and which bike you'd choose in the comments. Are you a hardtail person or do you prefer full suspension bikes? Remember, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you're looking for more on trail or enduro bikes, then check out our bike of the year videos. You can find the links to those videos in the description below.